welcome to part 11 of Project E55 ASL and this part is going to be about installing the differential in the car and once the differential is installed I'm also going to be making the propeller shaft, the shaft that has to go from the differential to the transmission. But before I can get to any of that I do need to do some finishing up on this back part of the chassis. There's a few braces that have to go on this um, rollover bar and then there's a further structure that has to go behind this chassis that where the differential and the rear suspension are going to mount. So I need to get started on that. I need to get done with all of that first before I can even uh, mount the differential in the car. Hopefully my plan for this video is to get everything done on the car so that starting the next video I can start work on the multi-link suspension, the rear suspension that is going to go on this car. Um, so yeah, let's see how everything goes. Talking about the differential that I'm going to be using in this car, so I'm sticking with the same one from the E55, or the one from my E55 actually. Um, I wasn't running the stock differential on the E55, the stock E55 comes with an open differential, but my one had a wave track LSD, so it's, um, it's a limited slip differential, a helical limited slip differential with clutches inside it as well, so the benefit of this differential over normal helical differentials is that usually normal mechanical differentials, when one wheel leaves the ground, the other wheel also loses all torque, but in this one that doesn't happen it has clutches inside it so that even if you're three wheeling through the corners or your car is hopping over curbs um, both wheels still have equal amount of torque going to them and it actually does work i have been running this differential on the 55 for like two years uh, tracking it and yeah the difference it makes is pretty substantial on the track that's why i'm planning to stick with the same one what i'm not planning to stick with though is the whole subframe and the suspension that was in the 55 because it's ridiculously heavy and it's uh, not the perfect suspension for my car really because it has a lot of rubber and stuff inside it. So what I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be getting rid of all the rest of the stuff. I'm only going to be keeping the differential, the axles, uh, the spindles and the brakes. So just to tell you how, how much all this weighs, like this whole stuff that you see over here weighs 150 kilograms. Um, just to put that into perspective, the whole chassis of my car, like the whole structure of this car right now, it weighs 100 kilograms, around about 100 kilograms. So it's pretty funny to see just the back part of the 55 weighs more than the entire structure of my car. I believe I'm going to be able to save like a good 70 kilograms or so in all this once I remove all the extra part and I'm only left with the differential and all the stuff that I really need. So yeah, next I have to actually start off by disassembling all of this stuff to actually get the differential out. Um, so that I can m do some final measurements of the differential and then start installing it in its proper place. Disassembling the subframe was easy enough. All I had to do was remove a few bolts, like I started off by removing all the control arms. Then I had to flip the subframe over just to reach the bolts that are on the lower side of the subframe. After that I broke the axle loose and then I was able to pull the spindle along with the axle out of the subframe. I did the same thing for the other side and then after that I could get to removing the differential. Here's a look at everything after it's all taken apart. Um, so that's the differential over there. Um, these are the spindles and the axles. So pretty much everything on this side is the thing that I'm keeping for this car and everything on that side is the thing that I'm not keeping. Um, so next what I have to do is that I have to go back to the design for a second because now I can actually measure out the exact locations of uh, my mounting points for my differential. So I need to figure out where these uh, mounting points will line up with my chassis before I make this back part of the frame just to make sure that I can um, design everything accordingly. So there is uh, six bolting points for this differential where it's going to bolt to the chassis. There's four bolting points on the front and then there's um, two more mounting points at the back over here. Um, I'm not going to be using rubber mounts like uh, the subframe uses, I'm just going to be solid mounting the differential, just like everything else is solid mounted, the transmission, the engine, everything is solid mounted on my car. Um, it's just a better way to go for a race car because um, you save weight first of all, then secondly, everything that you're mounting to the chassis, it contributes to the strength of the chassis as well. Mm -hmm. 
So after that I went back to the design and um, printed out these templates for the shapes I needed to cut these tubes out to notch them properly. And then after that I notched the tubes in those shapes, pretty much the same process I talked about in part 4 of the video series when I was making the tube steel chassis. By the way, I did make a playlist of all the videos in this project, so if you've missed out on anything, I'll make sure to link that in the description below, so you guys can find all the previous videos as well. After that, it was just a matter of putting all the tubes in their proper places and then tack holding them there. For some of the braces for this back part of the chassis, I cheaped out and I just went with square tubing. This was to save myself a bit of time because with square tubes you don't need to notch them like you need to notch round tubes. You just need to make straight cuts and um, the tubes can just be bolted onto each other. Um, so yeah, it saved me quite a bit of time over if I had to go with round tubes for all of it like it was in the design. Here's a look at the back part of the chassis after it's, well not done, but it's pretty close to done. It does need a few more braces, like there's uh, two braces that have to go from here to the back of the rollover bar. That's um, according to the regulations, every car has to have those. And also a few other braces in the middle for triangulation and everything, and also for the attachment points of the suspension. You'll see that later, I'll probably get to that in the next part, but um, for now I want to get to installing the differential because this is pretty much everything um, I need for installing the differential at least. Uh, also to mention, I have cheaped out a little on like, um, in design you might have noticed that all these tubes were supposed to be round tubes, but I've actually used square tubes. Um, that's just to save myself some time because I am pretty short on time for this project. Like I do want to get done with this car by September. That was my original goal for this project and I'm running like, I'm pretty much a whole month behind schedule what I had planned for this project. Square tubes aren't going to be as good as round tubes structurally, like um, they're to turn out heavier for the same strength um, as compared to round tubes so this is definitely not the best way to go but it just saves me a lot of time that's why I went with this rather than uh, making this whole back section out of round tubes but all the tubes that are appropriate for the um, rollover structure of the car those will be round tubes because those have to be round tubes according to the regulation but anyways yeah the next thing I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be putting the differential in its proper place so after that I positioned the car to its final ride height and I used two hydraulic jacks to hold the differential in place. Okay so I've taken some time to position the differential properly where it's supposed to go and I'm not too sure if I caught this on camera properly because I noticed later that the camera was pointing in the wrong direction. But anyways, uh, basically what I did was I used two hydraulic jacks to um, position the differential in a way that when the axles will come out they will line up with the wheels exactly so there's minimum angle on the um, CV joints, the constant velocity joints. So anyways now that the differential is positioned properly next what I have to do is that I have to make these um, bolting points where this differential is gonna mount to the chassis so the differential can be permanently held in this position. For making the mounting points for the differential I started off by cutting the steel tubes to size and then after that I welded caps on one side so it could form the bolting point. Once that was done I bolted all this in place to the differential. After that I just welded additional braces to the mounting points so that the differential could be held in its proper place. Here's a look at the differential after it's, well, partly mounted in place. There's still a few more braces that I have to add to secure the differential properly, but I'm going to leave that for the next video because there's a whole bunch of braces that I have to add in here anyways right now, so 
uh, makes sense just leaving it for later. But the differential is held in its proper place, like this is the final position the differential is going to go. So that means that now I can start work on the propeller shaft, um, the shaft that is going to link the differential to the transmission. Now for making this shaft, I have two propeller shafts over here. This is the one from my E55. And this is the one that goes at the back of the transmission. Now the problem is that the E55 prop shaft is obviously meant for the E55 transmission. So it has a flex joint that goes over there, then there's a U joint that goes in the middle. And then there's another flex joint that goes over there. So that flex joint is the thing that mounts on the differential. So basically what I have is this prop shaft that can fit to the transmission, but it can't connect with the differential. And I have that prop shaft that can connect with the differential, but it can't um, fit to the transmission. So I'm guessing at this point, you've probably figured what I'm gonna do next. So yeah, after that, I cut both the drive shafts in half so I could use one end, the transmission end from the um, Infiniti G35 or G37 drive shaft, whichever one it was from, and the other side from the Mercedes drive shaft. Um, this one, the Infiniti one, did have one of these uh, weird pivots inside it. Um, they put these in there for reducing that ringing noise that the drive shafts make. The Mercedes one didn't have any cardboard inside it, so you can see that that one makes that ringing noise. But I left the cardboard out anyways because I don't care about any ringing noise, it's fine even if the drive shaft makes that noise. It was interesting to compare the differences between these propeller shafts from the E55 and from the Infiniti. Um, funny enough, the Infiniti drive shaft was actually larger in terms of the outer diameter, it was 2mm bigger than the E55 prop shaft. Um, but in terms of thickness, the E55 one was slightly thicker, the um, Infiniti one was 2mm and the E55 one was 2.2mm. I believe if you work out the numbers, it would work out to pretty much the same strength though. After that, I put the 350Z drive shaft in place. And then I also bolted the Mercedes drive shaft in its proper place on the differential. Before welding, I also wedged the ends of these drive shafts and also scraped the paint off just so that it was a better surface to weld to. For holding the two drive shafts together perfectly straight, I just used these two pieces of um, angle steel, I believe it's called, and I clamped them together using hose clamps. Um, this was just to make sure that the two drive shafts were held together perfectly straight. I couldn't overlap them with a smaller tube or something because the um, two drive shafts were of slightly different diameters, so that wouldn't have worked. And then after that, I started off by tack welding everything together. Once the drive shafts were tack welded together, next I removed the hose clamps and everything and then I just completed the welds. Here's a look at the prop shaft after it's all complete and um, I'll try to give you guys a closer look at the weld. So this is what the weld looks like. It's looking pretty good like the bead doesn't look too thick on the outside but it is going pretty deep into the surface because I did wedge these two ends so like the weld is going all the way till the um, center like the inner diameter of the tubes and then so the penetration is pretty good. And yeah, it looks pretty good all around and also the prop shaft is perfectly straight. I did measure it even after welding it and it didn't warp at all. It is still perfectly straight. So that should all be good. I'm not going to be balancing the prop shaft because it's not a significant issue even if it's not balanced. The other thing you guys might be asking is about the phasing of the universal joints. Well, the phasing, what it is, is when you usually have two flex joints or two universal joints, the way you try to phase them is that you try to match these things over here, like um, this thing should be matching up with the thing on that side, the flex joint on that side. But the problem with my application is that I have a universal joint on one side and a flex joint on the other side. So uh, they will never match up perfectly. The purpose of um, phasing them properly is that uh, a universal joint never really moves in a constant velocity when it's at an angle, like it moves slightly in a sine wave. And uh, the point of phasing them is so that the um, oscillations from this universal joint will get cancelled by the oscillation of that universal joint and you'll end up with a constant velocity at your differential. Um, but the problem in my case is that because I have a flex joint on one end and the constant, uh, sorry, a universal joint at the other end, I will still be left with some vibrations at the differential, but it shouldn't be significant because the angles of uh, my uh, flex joint and the universal joint are really small. They're not, they're less than a two degree angle actually. So it shouldn't be a big problem. Even in the E55 actually, they were doing it the same way. They had um, two flex joints and then a universal joint in the middle. So this is pretty much the same thing as it is in the E55. 
So this is as far as I'm gonna get for this part really. So the <laughs> differential is mounted and I know some of you guys might already be complaining that I haven't even finished the, all the mounting points in the differential. But um, I'm gonna leave that for the next video because in the next video I'm gonna be making the multi-link suspension and there's a whole bunch of braces that still have to go in here. So yeah, I'm just gonna do that at the same time. Um, the next video should be coming up in I think two weeks from now depending on how fast I work on the multi-link suspension But it is gonna be a pretty difficult a pretty challenging thing to do because um, Well the front suspension I got it right the first time and there was no bump steer But I'd be pretty lucky if I have the same results with the rear suspension because it's a pretty complex thing Like it's gonna look something like this like there's links going all over the place And all the geometry does have to line up perfectly for the suspension to not have any bump steer at all and if it doesn't match up then obviously the suspension has bumps here and that's a big problem um, so I'm guessing there might be some trial and error involved in that like um, t making it and then um, testing it and then um, hopefully adjusting the geometry further to get to a point where there's no bump steer but yeah I'll see how that goes and you guys will definitely find out how that goes in a few weeks um, but yeah anyways this is everything for now thanks a lot for watching and see you guys in the next one